Hey friends, have you ever wondered why everything around you looks like the way it is? I mean, why the giraffe has a long neck? Why different birds have different types of beaks? Or why do you have a cutesy woodsy nose on your face? Well, everything we see around is the result of evolution. And what is that? To know more about it, let us evolve to the next level of video and learn how evolution changed the way the people viewed themselves and the world around us. Zoom in! So, what is evolution? Evolution is defined as any change in the heritable traits within a population across a generation. I know this could be a bit difficult to understand through definition. So, let's find the answer to a revolutionary question. How evolution works? For that, we need to call Kitty. Hey Kitty Kitty, come here. Let's have a closer look at her. Just like her, every creature is made up of cells. These cells have the nucleus that contains chromosomes that holds the DNA, a chain like chemicals. These DNA have genes that include coded information that builds different species, including you. But the information stored in your DNA is a bit different than the information contained in Kitty's DNA. That is why you two look and act so different from each other. Because it is unique to every creature. In simple creatures like a single cell amoeba, reproduction happens by copying of DNA within their own body and moving these copies to each side of it. Then they split into two parts and grow back to a fully formed creature. And if everything goes smoothly, the two new amoebae will be an exact copy of each other. But things don't always go according to the plan. While copying the DNA, errors can occur, resulting in modifying the DNA code. This process is called DNA mutation. These mutations that can be random or accidental causes variation in the body shape and characteristics of the creatures who inherits it. And if the new creature survives long enough to reproduce, these unique characteristics will be passed on to its new generation, resulting in the evolution of that species. But evolution in humans and other creatures like dogs, cats, whales, etc. are a bit complicated because it depends on two creatures than one. Like when two creatures fall in love with each other, a sperm cell from father that contains a copy of 50% of his DNA is combined with an egg cell of the mother that includes 50% copy of her DNA that results in a brand new set of DNA in the new baby creature. Now, these baby creatures have a random mix of DNA mixing the traits and characteristics of their parents. So, the new combination of traits along with their own unique features like extra long ears can be passed to their children, resulting in evolution. That is, any change in the heritable traits within a population across a generation. Trivia time! Did you know every living thing can trace its ancestry to a bacterium that lived billions of years ago? Also, did you know that inside some whales are small bones that show that they once had back legs and they had ancestors that walked on land? To watch the process how it all happens, you can click on the link below. Hope you enjoyed today's episode and until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Oh, never mind. 
Um. <laughs> oh, look at that. It seems to be a shark. Speaking of sharks, did you know that sharks had been on this planet since 450 million years? It is one of the species that has emerged as one of the most evolutionary successful species ever to live on this planet. So today, let us track their evolutionary history and learn about these amazing species and how they came to their modern forms in today's episode called The Evolution of Sharks. Zoom in! Sharks first began to develop as a unique species during the Silurian period around 450 million years ago from one of the many bony fish called Acanthodian. These fish are known to be the very first ancestors of the modern shark. And about 50 million years after the Silurian era, the Devonian era began and the very first fully formed shark, the Leonotus shark emerged with an eel-like body and were about 16 inches long. But the first modern avatar of sharks, the Clodosolachi, appeared in the late Devonian era. They differed from its eel-like ancestors and its body looked more close to what modern sharks look like. They were about 6 feet long with a streamlined body, 5 to 7 gill slits and dorsal fins. But they had a round nose shape and its jaw was stiff and fixed to its head as compared to modern sharks. Then began the golden age of sharks, the Carboniferous era around 360 million years ago. And the sharks started to dominate the oceans like never before, as they began to split into many subspecies, including rays, skates and chimeras. Few strange and new species of sharks like the Stetocanthus, the Eugenio Dontida and the Falcatus, nicknamed the Unicorn Shark, evolved during this period. And about 200 million years ago, with the Jurassic era, the modern shark began to rise like the Hypotus, which unfortunately got extinct. During this era, Sharks began to evolve flexible and protruding jaws and developed mouths under their snout so that they could hunt and eat larger prey and developed tail fins that allowed them to swim faster and more efficiently. And then came the Cretaceous era, some 145 to 65 million years ago. Many deep sea sharks like the goblin shark originated during this period. It was also the time when Lamnidae sharks, also known as white sharks, with the anatomy of what we think of sharks having today, evolved. Then came the Cenozoic period about 60 million years ago and then entered the most famous prehistoric shark that defined sharks as vicious, clever, apex predators the Megalodon, meaning Big Tooth. They were the biggest ocean predator that ever existed under the surface of the water with a whopping length of around 65 feet and weighing around 30 tons. With 7 inch long teeth, they even used to eat whales. Trivia time! Did you know most of the sharks of the planet have developed in the Cenozoic era. The newest shark species to enter the water is the hammerhead shark that dates back about 20 million years. Also, currently there are around 440 species of sharks swimming in our seas. However, all 440 species of sharks are currently under threat from none other than humans. And if we do not stop killing them, then they will not survive in the future. So friends, 
let us take a pledge to do everything in our hands to save this massive creature that plays an important role in our ecosystem. And one of the ways to help sharks is by sharing this video with your friends and family. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. And until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Wow! It's coming towards me. Wow! <laughs> Never mind. Hey friends, welcome to the African Safari. I am looking for the largest land mammal in the world. That is the incredible, magnificent, humongous elephant. Oh, look, here it is friends. Isn't it huge? Indeed, very huge. But you will be surprised to know that in the prehistoric period, some of the species were the size of pigs and cows. Yes, so today, let us explore the giant world of this massive creature we call elephants and learn about their evolution. Zoom in! Elephants belong to the elephant to die family and to the proboscidea order. That includes a diverse group of animals, including elephants, hyraxes, and sea cows. The elephant we see today are very huge animals that can grow up to 13 feet tall and can weigh up to 13,000 pounds. But early elephants were very different in their size and their appearance back then compared to what we see of them today. It all started roughly about 37 million years ago with a species known as Muritherium. They were heavily built animals and were about 3 feet tall. The shape of the skull suggests that while Muritherium did not have an elephant-like trunk, it may have had a broad flexible upper lip like it appears for grasping aquatic vegetation. Then came the Baritherium. The most important feature that was changed from the Muritherium would be the small tusks that were on the upper and lower jaw. This was changed because the need to be able to have their shearing action to crop plants. Then about 26 million years ago came the Numidotherium with much slender body shape and not much changed until then. However, as the species evolved with time, the animals grew bigger with longer limbs, their skull, teeth and tusk size increased and a movable trunk developed and became the Danotherium. It probably resembled modern elephants except it had downward curving tusks attached to the lower jaw. But the species that is the closest relative to modern elephants are the mammoths that walked on earth about 1.6 million years ago. The last mammoth species became extinct about 10,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. But it is unclear whether they were driven to extinction by climatic factors or as a consequence of hunting by early man. Trivia time! Did you know that loss of habitat and poaching for ivory and bushmeat are great threats to elephant populations? As of 2013, there has been an estimated 90% decline in the Asian elephant population and a 75% decline in the African elephant population over the last 100 years. So my dear friends, we must do everything to protect this nature's massive wonder we call elephant and spread awareness about their condition. And one great way to contribute towards the betterment of elephants is by sharing this video with our family and friends. Hope you enjoyed today's episode and until next time, it's me Dr. Binox zooming out. Ah. Never mind. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, goodness me! Did you see that 
friends? Ho ho! That was one giant animal! Or should I say, that was one giant whale! So kids, let us enter the enormous world of whales and learn some interesting facts about these largest species in the world. Zoom in! So friends, I'm sure that you already know that whales are the largest animals ever lived on the planet Earth. Even bigger than the largest dinosaur. But you will be surprised to know that it is believed that millions of years ago, whales were land animals. Yes, they probably walked upon the earth. The first whales were known as Pachycetus. Their skulls were long with large carnivorous teeth. I know you guys must be wondering that they don't even look remotely close to their present avatar. But if we examine closely at their skulls, especially in the ear region, which is surrounded by a bony wall, it strongly resembles those of existing whales and is unlike any other mammal we have seen. As these creatures entered the water, their hind legs disappeared over time and their front legs evolved into flippers. Just like my mustaches evolved into hands. <laughs> hmm. Oh, never mind. Coming back to our giant relatives known as whales. Yes, I'm calling them relatives because just like humans, whales are mammals and not a fish like we popularly believe. And like most mammals, they feed milk to their babies and breathe air for oxygen through their nose. Hmm, hmm, I know you guys are like, but whales don't have noses. Of course they don't have a nose as you do. But if you look closely, they have a hole on top of their heads and it's called a blowhole. Blowholes are surrounded by protective muscles and they only open it when whales are at the surface and needs to breathe. Sometimes when a whale exhales from its blowhole, it shows up as a spray called a spout that can be viewed many miles away. Trivia time! Did you know that the largest known whale to ever exist has been known to grow to lengths of 70 to 90 feet long and can weigh up to 150 tons? Whoa! I would never like to wrestle a whale even in my wildest dream. Not only that, blue whales are loudest animals on the planet. Their cries can be louder than a jet engine. Whoa, I would never make a whale cry as well. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox. Zoo!